Hi, Neil here from Portainer. Today I'm going to give you a quick uh, walkthrough of a project we just came across called Run CVM. It's an alternate runtime for Docker that spins up containers as uh, QEMU virtual machines uh, with no additional work required by you. So here is the project's website, just GitHub uh, News Now Labs Run CVM, and you can see some detail on it here. Um, it's pretty simple to install, just a curl command to install. It installs everything it needs to operate. Um, you just need a Linux virtual machine that supports nested virtualization, um, which I have spun up here in DigitalOcean, and I have here ready to go. Uh, it, it has nothing installed in it at the moment, it's just a plain virtual machine. So first thing we need to do is actually install Docker. And if we go to the install docker engine on Ubuntu page, uh, there's a whole uh, convoluted process here to get docker installed, or you can come down and use the convenience script, which is one that I quite like here. So you just grab this command, paste this in here, and then just pipe it to bash. And that will install docker in this virtual machine in the easiest way possible. Install is almost finished. Okay, that's done. It's just Docker info and we have Docker installed. So now you just need to go to the run CVM, grab the same installation command, come back to the virtual machine and run it and that will install the run CVM installer. Nice that it just it all comes as a container, so you don't have to worry about any kind of install scripts. Pretty, pretty convenient, if you ask me. And they've given you some examples here of how to use this. Um, but I think, first of all, what I'll do is just run a container without this. So here, if we do docker run dash d nginx, as an example, we just do a ps minus ef nginx. What did I do there? Grab nginx. So you can see here are the nginx commands that are running. Um, even though it's in a container from the host, Obviously, the Nginx processes are still visible. I do a docker ps, docker stop 949, and then rerun this command, you'll see that those processes are gone. So um, again, as a container, uh, you can still see the Nginx processes uh, on the host directly. Now, if we just run using the new run CVM runtime, so docker run, Dash runtime equals run CVM nginx. Takes a bit longer to start because it's actually starting a virtual machine. Oops, I didn't actually do the docker run slash d. So that's not very good. Here we go. So that's now running. Now if I do the same docker ps ef Nginx, you see there's no Nginx running, even though the container is running. What happens if we do a grep qpmu? You see here, Nginx is actually running inside a virtual machine powered by qemu. And just to confirm that, if I do docker ps, docker stop, F six C. Again, it takes a little while to stop because it is stopping a virtual machine. And now run the same PSEF. There you go. So you can see there's no QEMU there. So that's quite cool. That is quite easy way to spin up a container in a virtual machine. Now, why would you want to do this? To give yourself additional isolation. Um, obviously, when it's running inside a virtual machine, you have complete isolation from the host operating system, and all, all containers 
have, have isolation from themselves. Um, there's actually quite a bit of uh, documentation in this run CVM, even though it's a very young project, um, which explains how port forwarding works with proxying, um, all of the Docker commands that are supported, and it's pretty much every command you can imagine is supported, um, and how to assign things like CPUs here. So you can see dash dash CPUs 2, dash dash memory 2 gig means uh, configure a virtual machine with 2 CPUs and 2 gig of RAM. Now if we just scroll up here you see by default without any um, any additional commands this virtual machine had 512 megabytes of RAM assigned to it and it had a single uh, a single CPU assigned to it. So now let's have a look and see how we do this with Portainer. Docker run Sock. I'm not persisting anything here, so don't don't use this in production because I don't want to persist the Portainer database just for this test. So there we go. We'll run Portainer. Come back to here. Get the IP address. Open up a new browser window. Set the risk. Let's just choose a randomly generated password. Why not? Create the user. Get started. Okay, so first thing we want to do, you can see here's these containers. If I go add container now, let's do the same thing. Nginx, Nginx VM. Now if we scroll down here, you see runtime and resources, you just have to change the runtime from default to run CVM, and now it can actually run using that same virtualization layer. Now interestingly enough here, inside Portainer, we already have slider bars here to configure the resources that are assigned to a container, but interestingly enough, under the covers, all we are actually doing here is setting those uh, CPUs and memory allocations anyway. So we could actually say we want this to have two CPU and five six three two mega memory, and we if we want to we can even say let's actually publish port eighty to port eighty just to show that you can actually do it even though it's in a virtual machine, and hit deploy. And so here you go, it's deployed. If I just come back to the virtual machine again and do the same PSEF, you see here it's got the 5632 megabytes of memory assigned and SMP2 means it's been assigned two CPUs uh, as we had allocated. So the yeah, container was then able to use the same runtime, deploy the container uh, and set the CPU and memory allocations. So let's just grab the same IP address put it into the browser, and there's Nginx. So we were actually able to get to it, even though it's running in a virtual machine. Docker takes care of all of the port forwarding that is required um, through that runtime hook. So I quite like that. It's, um, it's a really, really nice, uh, secure way to spin up really lightweight virtual machines uh, for containers. So if you have any containers that are particularly vulnerable, um, that's quite a nice little trick. Um, now, as I said in the documentation, there's a lot of uh, well, a lot of documentation written about it, um, which describes uh, everything that's that's available. So um, all of the um, commands that are available, as you can see here. So you can actually bind them out. Um, there's some limitations, but just come and have a play and see what's available. So I hope you like this project. Um, we're definitely impressed by it, and we'll be keeping an eye on it. Uh, we may even look to use that internally ourselves. Pretty nice tool. Thanks.